we're gonna look at my top 10 junkyards of 2021. Our top 10 junkyards of 2021. So we've done over 200 videos right now and we've never done our top stuff. So we're gonna do top 10 junkyards of 2021. So ones that mostly surprised us or had the coolest cars or the neatest finds or just enjoyed walking through. So welcome to another episode of Junkyards and Barn Finds with Sean and I'm Sean. So maybe the owner of the junkyard is cool, maybe the finds were awesome, maybe there were surprises there. So uh, right now let's start with our top 10 countdown. At number 10, and like I said, these are just my feelings of it since um, I'm even official, I wrote them down. So number 10 would be um, in Morrisville, PA, the car crushing junkyard crushing muscle cars uh, that was a junkyard that I was sent over to uh, by another junkyard they said you might want to go there there is no office or gate it just so happens that I pulled up to the front gate where the guy was sitting in his car and he saw me there because he sometimes just hangs out there but there's no way to entry I don't have a phone number for them no email or anything so I went over a guy named George who was um, he's deaf he's about 80 years old he owns the place he's owned it, it's huge uh, if you see the video and when I got there he actually let, drove me all the way to the farthest place and said hey I'm crushing these today there was a ton of cars there you saw them Chevelles Pontiacs everything and um, a lot of Mopar and he just is old and his daughter doesn't want to run it so she's cleaning it up and they're selling everything and just crushing it and in the middle as I walked around I got to the back 40 of it I mean it's a huge huge place I had to drive from section to section and uh, there's just this big giant pile of scrap metal with like five or six big tractor trailers and dumps they're just grabbing the cars and they're just crushing them and and selling the metal and uh, I mean, I found everything in there. There was some Chevelles, there was Cudas, there was Challengers, there was everything. And um, it wasn't real rusted. Some of the stuff looked like it was parked there three days ago. There's some stuff that was really destroyed, but um, just depending on where I looked. Uh, at the end, I mean, I was there for about an hour and then he came looking for me. And at the end of the video, you'll see me driving and you'll see Camaros and everything to the right and the left and everything. Um, and he was like, why did you stop? Well, he wanted to go home. He's 80 years old and I had been there for about an hour and a half and it was his lunchtime and he needed to go home. So I didn't get to go back, but um, it was right across the river from Trenton, New Jersey in Morrisville. And uh, people there know what it is. I guess people know him, um, but it is what it is. All right, number nine, Pocono Junkyard. Oh my God, I drove up there. I had been there as a kid because I grew up in Pennsylvania about uh, down in Bucks County. So this is about two hours north up in Pocono up the Turnpike. And this place is giant. And um, you know, if you go there, you gotta bring a lunch. Actually, you don't have to bring a lunch because there's like a little restaurant right there. Uh, they have so many people go there. The, the coolest thing is you go down a hill when you see the video, see I walk way down hill. It took 10 minutes to go from the entry just to get to the classic car section, which is down the bottom. They must have 10 or 20,000 cars at this place. And a lot of them had stripped over or taken. I mean, the, the place has been there for, well, I'm 55 and I was going there in the 80s. The saddest thing there was the whole place, and you get a really good overview of it, when you when the video opens because you can look it's all like down a hill because it's the Pocono Mountains and um, all you, you see surrounding it looks like a fence line but when you get down there it's not it's crushed cars like five and six and seven high that are crushed I mean crushed like this I mean you know they're just crushed down and you can tell that there's stuff there from the 50s and the 60s and the early 70s and it's probably been it was probably crushed in the 80s when they weren't worth much but um, Man, I would love to see the stories of those. But there's a ton of cars there. I think we did, uh, 
think two or three episodes there because it was just crazy. It just took all day. I think I got there at like 8 a.m. I think I left about 2.30 in the afternoon. All right, number eight, Banters. Uh, it's an old Chevy dealership up in Hudson, Florida. And a guy named John bought it a couple of years ago. Um, when I say an old dealership, it was an old dealership like in the 80s. It was old. I mean, this is like an original like 1950s, 60s Florida. And if you see it, you go, wow, this place looks like what you would think of like a 1950s. They could make a movie there. But anyway, he bought it. It has so many parts, bumpers and doors and just chrome pieces. I mean, he has three tractor trailers full of just 55 to 57 parts. I mean, parts, not... And a lot of new old stock there, um, but there's other stuff as well. He has a big shop there. Everything there, like every time I turned around, it was like, here's a race car they're building. Here's this they're building. Here's that they're building. And the other cool thing is he's from, I'm assuming Boston, when you listen to him, it's up in the Boston area, but he was in from New England. He used to race NASCAR back in the 80s. Um, and uh, he used to race against Dale Earnhardt when NASCAR would come up there because he traveled a little bit. He said he drove the Coca-Cola car back then. Uh, and this is when nobody was really making money in NASCAR. You're talking, you know, 70s, 80s, when the price, the, the purse might be five grand or a set of tires. So he used to race against Dale Earnhardt when he was coming up, when he had the Wrangler car. And I said this is like in the 80s, 82, 83 or whatever. And uh, they used to, he, he told a story about where um, they said, if Dale gets behind you, he's going to push you out of the way. And they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And... He said he was driving. All of a sudden, he looked at his rearview mirror. There's Dale Earnhardt. And next thing you know, his he's spinning sideways because Dale pushed him right out of the way. And this is before Dale was the intimidator. This is when he was, you know, just racing, racing. So, um, yeah, just the stories alone. But if you watch it, you'll see all the cool cars they have there and everything else. And under all those tarps are race cars. And I didn't even know that till the end when we started walking around. So that's really cool. Number seven. Junkyard Barbie in Mooresville, PA. And yes, it's Junkyard Barbie. Um, that's the name of the place. When you go there, the building's pink. Out front, they have a whole junkyard of the little pedal cars and the little electric cars that you buy, the little plastic ones for kids. Um, there's a girl named Michelle. Uh, you'll see her. And it was a real popular video. Everybody really, really liked it. Um, Michelle's a ball of energy. It was a fun place. She plays music. She goes out. Everybody there is super, super nice. Uh, the hardest thing about that video, uh, and it's like the cleanest junkyard ever. I mean, if you figure out someone with OCD who's a woman who keeps everything clean, that is clean. You should see it. It's like, don't drop something in the dirt because she'll make you pick it up type thing. But it is super easy. She has everything there when you see the video. But... Um, I think the funniest thing is, is that I'm from Philadelphia, the Philadelphia area. She's really from the Philadelphia area, Philadelphia, right across from New Jersey. And it took me about two days just to edit out all the curse words because she talks like a sailor. She's the nicest people, sweetest person in the world. But it took a while. It was worth every minute. You guys have seen the video. It's one of our most uh, successful videos. So um, yeah. So that was Junkyard Barbie. That's cool. If you if you want to see it, it's a funny video. Uh, she's she's just a blast. Um, all right, number six, the Goose Junkyard in Perks CPA. This was right in Bucks County where I grew up. I never even knew the junkyard was there, and I grew up there for 19 years. There's people there that I talked to friends that didn't know this was there. It is a huge junkyard. A lot of AMXs, a lot of 60s and 70s stuff in there. Um, it's a private junkyard. It used to be open to the public, um, but too many people were just taking stuff, so they didn't really want open to the public. I mean, they'll drive you around. That's what happened with me as I came in, and it's a family-owned business. The grandson, who is like in high school or right out of high school, uh, he went ahead and grabbed the old truck, and we drove around. There's three videos of it. That's how big it is. I mean, we're driving around. He would stop, tell me this is here, this is there, whatever. We had a fun time. Um, it was a family friendly. They were super, super nice. And just a ton of AMX and other cars because their grandfather loves that stuff. And the kid himself, I think he said he had a, a big block Chevelle or something. Um, waiting to look at his driver's license, maybe? I don't know. 
All right, number five. Number five, Hudson's um, in North Carolina. It's in the North Carolina. It's a classic car place. Uh, it was a beautiful day up there. It's a beautiful drive through this really small town. You go high up into the mountains and all of a sudden you go around some bends and stuff and there's like some farm fields and you go up over a hill and then on the right there you see this barn and that's his place to the left there's a horse pasture that has a big fence and there's a lot of there's like five or six rows of of classic cars in there but there's also a ton over on the, the right side where the shop and the house and everything is went in there they stopped everything they were doing gave me a tour of some of his favorite cars that he has and he has some beautiful cars indoors uh, that he's kept over the years and he's been there 50 years or something and uh, so he put me in his truck drove me to the farthest farthest point which is what I asked where's the old so he took me all the way to the farthest point I worked my way up all the way up the hill uh, the guy knows where every car is there every single thing he personally put someplace and he was working on an old 50s when I got up to the top of the hill and then he said, I can go over and look at the other old stuff that's across the street in his horse pasture. But I had to climb the fence because there was horses and donkeys in there. Luckily, he didn't get bit or kicked or anything. But, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And they were really super nice people. Very nice. The, the, him and his wife were just awesome. Um, I guess his family's into it, too. It's, it's just a really, really nice family business. Number four. This place is Graves in South Carolina. Uh, it's right over the border from Augusta, Georgia, when I was up in Augusta. And um, it looks like us when you pull up, there's a building that's Graves and they do some custom restorations. They had some really awesome stuff. They take, you know, if there's something there, they, they were building, I think, a big Bronco and a Jeepster and other stuff. So they build vehicles and sell them out of the parts they have and stuff. And they, they have some really good, talented guys there. They were a super nice family. The owner was like, yeah, go out there, go explore. Well, when you first get out, there's a lot of the old stuff and everything's right up front. So I went there. Then I walked towards the back thinking, you know, I'm going down this hill. When you, you go down the hill, there's woods around and you can't tell how big it is. So you go down, you see all the old stuff and go, oh, I'll walk down a little bit. Then you look to your left and there's a giant field. So you go down there for a little bit. Then you look through the woods and about four feet through the woods, there's another field, and you walk, follow the fence around, there's another field, and they had Corvettes and Mustangs there, and then you go up into another area, and there's a ton of Volkswagens, 50 to 100 Volkswagens of every type, and then there's old cars, Etzels, and everything. So that was a real surprise, and they didn't tell me any of this. When I came back, they're like, yeah, it's big, isn't it? I was like, yeah. I mean, I should have brought, like, three bottles of water and a camel for that one. All right, number three. So number three is Harley's in Augusta, Georgia. And this, I have to give a shout out to the guys that were at uh, Tobacco Road. The gentleman at Tobacco Road told me, go up to Harley's. He has a couple cars there. Well, you pull up the Harley's, which is out past the paper plant, just in the middle of Georgia. And it has a little sign, Harley's truck parts or whatever. And you see a couple cars out front, like a Nova, you know, and, uh, and this uh, El Camino and stuff. So I pulled in thinking that's what I was going to see, and there's some buildings behind it. When I got there, though, when I walked in and I said, I was just here to video some of your cars. It's, you know, late in the day. And he goes, well, do you want to go out back? And I'm like, what's out back? And he's like, oh, I have like 400 cars in the woods. But to get out back, I had to go through the back shop, and he has a shop, a working shop, where he fixes things and does work for people in the neighborhood or whatever, or not neighborhood, but you know, farmers and stuff. They bring their stuff and buy trucks and does truck parts. But he has a whole museum back there. There's he has probably 40 cars in these buildings, big block Chevelles and Mopars and Model As and everything that are in there. Whole motorcycle. He actually set it up. You walk through, it's like a museum. I mean, he has railings and stuff on the wall and everything. It's his own personal museum. And then when you come out, you'll see if you it's walk through the woods and cars that have just been out there for years. I mean, I found a whole bunch of Mopars, GTXs, Roadrunners, and all whole rows of them. So that was really cool. That was that was a really big surprise. Uh, I wasn't even ready for it actually because I the, didn't realize I was going to be doing that much. I thought the batteries on my computer uh, cameras were going dead. I think I filmed some of it with my phone because the cameras did go dead. I wasn't prepared. 
Number two, Vic's Classic Car in Chesney, South Carolina. All right, I went and saw Vic's, and um, I drove from Florida, really specifically to go up to this place. I had heard about it, not a lot of videos of it online, not a lot of information. There was like a, a 10 minute thing on some TV show I saw. So I went up there, and when you get up there to the right where his office is, there must be 10,000 cars up on a hill. So you're looking, you go down, you look down, you can see all these cars up there. So I pull in, and right in front, you know, there's a 67 Firebird. There's all kinds of stuff right there. Um, and classic cars. And I'm like, hey, this is awesome. So I go in the office. He goes, oh, no, no, no. This is not the classic car. This is the side that we're still working. Across the, ha across the street, there's his house. And that's his house. And he goes, oh, right next to that, there's like 3,000, 4,000 cars in those woods. That used to be a field. That was the original um junkyard and you, he wrote me a little letter in case anybody wants to know, be on your property here you go and there's people that come there and he doesn't charge anything he's just like yeah go there's families walking through here like this is a thing uh up there in chesney south carolina where there's like there's pathways and everything else and you go through and you'll see it we actually i think we did three or four videos there um, I would have loved to see this place when it was just a field, but now there's all trees, there's pine trees, all these fast growing trees that have grown over the last 20 years. Um, but the cars in there are just incredible. There's so much in there. I just don't know how you would get them out, but I mean, you'll, you'll see them in there and it's just crazy. And you'll see like families there for, it was a Saturday. It was a beautiful day. I was thinking it was like 70 degrees and it was great although i almost got sprayed by a family of skunks that i thought was a pillow on the ground so you'll see that too and i thought was that pillow why is the pillow moving and it was a whole family of skunks all right my number one and if you look on the channel you'll see we probably have eight videos and we've been there twice and it's a place called old gold and this is in old town florida which is up in the panhandle which is the big bend area up where i-10 and i-75 get together up towards um i guess uh lake city gainesville area and there's a guy named wayne who owned a towing company and parts company i guess in the 60s and early 70s through the late 70s and he has an amazing amazing amount of muscle cars there and he has Cadillacs he's got 100 Cadillacs all the finned ones from the 50s there he's got row upon row of first generation Firebirds Camaros Buicks all these 60s cars GSX's Chevelles um, in fact we went back we went there first that was one of the first places I heard about when you get there there's no cell service there's no internet um, it's in the middle of nowhere, Florida. And when you get there, Wayne is there and there's a couple guys and these are just, you know, your old Georgia, or in, I'm sorry, North Florida. Um, guys, if they like you, you can go out and check stuff out. Now there's a lot of bees. In fact, I thought in one of the old Cadillacs, I was like, that's a weird looking back seat. The whole back seat was a giant wasp nest. That's how big the wasp nest was. So. Uh, like he says, you don't want to open anything because there's rattlesnakes and everything up there. So, um, but we walked around. In fact, you'll see part of it at the end of every video because April went with us and April was up there and that's the ending of every video where I ask if, you know, she should recommend people subscribing and it's for this. So, um, yeah, he had a, uh, and, and. I should have asked because the first time we went, and I'm a Chevelle guy, I love Chevelles, um, and there was a 70 Chevelle that uh, convertible that was sitting there, and you'll see it. You see it in the in the one of the first videos. I think it's actually on the cover or the cover art or whatever you want to call it from one of the first videos. It's like a yellow beige one. It's pretty complete, and I didn't ask him how much it was because I'm thinking you know 70 Chevelle complete. Uh, convertibles, even in bad shape, you're still paying five to seven thousand dollars, and that was a little bit out of my budget for for a build at the time. Well, we went back in March, and I had asked, thought, well, you know what, maybe 
I can swing this. I had some extra cash and stuff like that, so let me swing this. So I went and I said, where's that Chevelle? And he goes, oh, I sold it. And I said, for how much? And he goes, eight. And I said, yeah, that makes about sense, 8,000. He goes, oh, no, 800. Because 800 is the scrap value. And ever since, that's what, like, that car was, like, my little last unicorn. That was the unicorn I should have gotten. I could, I would have rented a trailer. I would have bought a trailer for $600 to put that thing on. So, anyway, um, yeah, that was a lesson learned doing this. But it was one of the first places we went to. Like I said, we, we went there in January. We had just started this channel. So, I think it was, like, the third video shoot that we did. And then we went back in March when we were coming. We were supposed to go up to another place. That's when we were. We went during uh, spring break in March. We went up through North Carolina or uh, up South Carolina and Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, and we were going to head up into Tennessee. And that's when they had the big bad storms and some tornadoes and stuff. So we turned around because we were literally heading towards that and came back to South Florida. And we thought, well, while we're here, let's stop office 75 and see Wayne and have some pizza and just you know just sit and talk you know old guys talking and uh, we went in and that's when I found out he sold it but we did some more video because they had gone and uncovered some cars in the first one you'll see a lot of cars especially with some a lot of first generation Camaros and stuff that are just covered in kudzu if you don't know what kudzu is it's a, a plant that just grows over everything it's a vine it's pretty prevalent up in uh, North Florida and Georgia and in the South. Um, you always see houses covered with and stuff. And if you don't move something, Kudzu will cover it. And it's got thorns and stuff on it. And it's got some liquidy things that'll like, get on you. It's really gross. But they're cleaning, you know, they were taking that off. But you'll see it's just row after row. I mean, there's 2,500 to 3,000 cars there. So um, anyway, that's my number one. That's why there's so many videos there. I hope this is the same as you guys. Uh, if, um, uh, I hope that you uh, will check them out. I actually made a playlist called uh, 2021 Top Videos. Now, there's 24 videos in there because, like I said, some of these have multiple videos. There might be part one, two, or three. But the, all the top ten that we just went over, top ten locations, is there. So if you never check those videos out and you want to know what the best ones out of the 200 that we've put up, uh, as far as junkyard, you can go in there, fast forward through parts. I separated like old gold, separated into like uh, Pontiacs, Fords, Chevelles, Cadillacs. Um, I've separated some of the other ones that are big into different days or different times. So check them out, leave some comments. I appreciate all you guys uh, and girls who watch this. And um, thank you guys so much. This has been a great year. It's a fun year. Uh, you've made a hobby of mine turn into um, what I can do every day. And I really, really appreciate you guys for it. We try to mix everything in. Like I said, from models to hot rods to race cars to museums to junkyards. It's, uh, and I know some people like different things. We will be definitely putting up some more junkyards. As I said, we're going to be going up to Tennessee and some other places. And um, so stay tuned. If you like this, please subscribe. It's the easiest way to find us is subscribing, uh, ringing a bell. We do have t-shirts, which we will be putting up soon. We are still trying to figure all this out as far as the selling t-shirts we've been asked. Um, I will put up some information on that. We're trying, we're getting the bank account set up and all that stuff. So. Um, we appreciate it. I hope to see you. If you see me out, I'm always filming. Uh, if you see me anywhere, just come up and say hi. I'm a, I'm just like you guys. I'm just a car dude. So uh, I like meeting you guys and hearing your stories. Um, whether they're on video or not, I just like talking cars and seeing cool cars. And if you, uh, and I normally try to tell people where we're going, so that way if we're going to come up there and you have something cool, that's how we found that whole horde. One of uh, a guy named John who owns an AMX. If you saw the horde of AMCs and AMXs, that is one of our most popular videos. I think it has 130,000 views or something, or 170, something like that. Um, that was because one of our John who watches the channel, he said, hey, if you ever come up here to Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, let me know. I know where there's a whole ton of cars at AMC's cars, and, and we did, and it was crazy. 
And the guy who owns those was happy because we put the video up and I've heard from viewers that they've actually gone and purchased. I know at least three viewers that said they went there and bought it. One bought a Javelin, one bought a Rebel, and one bought an AMX. And that's just since we've been there. So, And that's what the guy wanted. He's like, hey, I'm 80 years old. I need to clear it out. So anyway, appreciate it, guys. Enjoy. Thank you for your time. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video in our top 10. I look forward to seeing if you guys agree with us or disagree with us. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. April, should they subscribe to this channel even if they don't like cars today for this one? Probably just for this one.